<laughs> okay, guys, look, you're never going to believe this. All right. You're never going to believe this. When, when I, when I, when I show you this, you're never going to believe it. NAR. Okay. Now NAR, the National Association of Realtors is now advising my clients on commissions, right? On my commissions. All right. Th 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 in my opinion, this is taking a step way too far. It's all, it almost feels like a desperate leap. Um, it, it, to, to me, right? So anyway, I want to get into this. I want to share what's going on with you. I also want to talk about this war going on with the clear cooperation policy that NAR has in place. The clear cooperation policy basically says that when you get, when an agent gets a listing, right, they have to put it in MLS, right? It's mandatory that you put it in MLS. So there's a war going on right now between Zillow, Redfin, exp compass the agency and everybody every one of those companies have their own agenda they've got their own opinion on what nar should do with the clear cooperation policy and i want to know what your thoughts are i want to get because because i want to use the comments as kind of like a survey like i want to know what the industry what you guys think about this stuff because this stuff affects us it affects how we do business it doesn't affect the success of our business, that's something I want you to, to, I want to make that crystal clear. This doesn't affect the success of your business, but it does affect how we operate as a business. And I want to, you to be completely informed so that you can make the best decisions possible for your business moving forward. Before I get into all that, I want to share with you the actual market here. Okay, home prices see largest increase in four months. OK, so we had a we had a nice little bump. OK, um, Redfin says home prices continue to rise in part because of low housing supply. So we still have a low, low inventory. Home prices are gaining traction as mortgage rates continue their descent. U.S. home prices grew by 0.5 percent in August, right, on a seasonally adjusted basis. Making the highest monthly jump since April, right? Annually, they jumped 6.7 percent. Right. And that's the lowest annual increase since January. OK, housing inventory. Here's the big one. Housing inventory remains 30 percent below pre pandemic levels, despite the fact that supply is up 16.7 percent year over year. Prices kept creeping up during this unusual slow summer for home sales as mortgage rates came down and supply remained stubbornly low. All right. If mortgage rates fall further this fall, and we expect that they will, price growth will likely pick up as more prospective home buyers come off the sidelines. Right. And so, so basically, like we're in this position where inventory is still extremely low. And now we're, we've ran through the cycle where now rates are starting to come back down. We've already seen that. All right. Right now, let's see what rates are. Rates are as of right now that I, that I'm making this video. They're at 6.15, 6.15. Like we're getting so close to that, to that 6%. And the feds are actually going to have their meeting uh, in about an hour and a half from the moment that I'm actually filming this. So they're actually, po they're, they're actually positioned to possibly have our first rate cut today. Um, so, but that's going to be after I film this video. So I don't know what they're going to do. But we're already at a 6.1% rate on mortgage rates. Like we're fixing to dip down in the fives, I would imagine. Now, that doesn't mean that it can't fluctuate back up to 6.3, 6.4. There's going to be some fluctuations up and down, but the trend is down. Inventory is still lower than we were pre-pandemic nationally. Your market may be higher, whatever. We're just speaking on a national basis right now. And I'm just telling you, there's more pent up demand than we've ever had due to the mortgage golden handcuff crisis, a coupled with more first time home buyers, 30 something year olds, right? Due to the birthright, uh, the birth, uh, um, the, the birth rate spikes in the nineties, we've got more 30 something year olds than we've had in decades you couple those two together right you couple lower mortgage rates you couple still lower inventory historically right we set up for a big year next year and when do you take when do you take advantage of a big year right this second right now you take advantage of what's going to happen next year you don't wait till it happens to start taking action you should be digging in 
and visualizing where you want your business to be over the next 12 months. Do you want it to double? Because there's an opportunity for you to double your business if you're willing to put the work in to make the calls, to meet the people, to do what you're supposed to do to build your business and, and, and increase that band, brand, expand your influence in your market where more people know who you are. You, you, you've had some time to, to create trust, right? A high level of trust. Before you have a large inventory of listings, you must first develop a high level of trust with a large volume of property owners in the market, right? So, so how do you develop a high level of trust? Well, that takes a little bit of time. Okay, and how do you develop a large, uh, a high level of trust with a large amount of of property owners? You got to talk to a lot of property owners and plant those seeds, and then put them into your nurture process, so that when things turn around and the market re-expands, your business will double, triple overnight. I'm just saying this happened to me, and I've I've watched it happen with many other agents that were right there with me during those 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12 years. This is literally a replay of that time for real estate agents. We're down to 2008 levels when it comes to number of transactions right now. Don't sleep on this, please. I'm begging you. <laughs> Go all in on your business so that you can see that two, three X next year, and then you'll be in position and you actually, you'll actually see the light at the end of the tunnel for what you can actually accomplish in 2026, 2027. It's all a catalyst for what you've been doing this year and last year. I've been telling you guys, go all in. So let's dive into this, these situations. Can you believe that NAR offers new advice? for sellers on agent compensation. So what's so funny is, is when the lawsuit happened, they were in court and their stance was, is we don't have anything to do with commissions. We don't talk about commissions. We don't tell agents what to charge. We don't, have, we don't say or do anything when it comes to commissions. But now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden they are, they're giving, they're giving sellers, right? Advice on commission, right? So now they're advising my clients on my commission. With industry rule changes now in effect, the National Association of Realtors has been doubling down on education and outreach to buyers and sellers. Okay, why? Right? It's it feels desperate. It feels like a desperate attempt to try to satisfy the plaintiffs, and that's exactly what it is. Right? It's exactly what it is. But if you had nothing to do with commissions, why don't you just? Continue to not have anything to do with commissions. Why are you injecting yourself into the commission uh, compensation conversation, right? So um, uh, what is NAR telling consumers about agent pay? The new seller guidelines start with a brief summary of what an offer compensation is and the typical cost. Ultimately, um, NAR has taken a clear stand on reaffirming the practice changes for agents and, uh, and assuring customers that they are the only ones in the driver's seat. It's up to um, it is up to you to determine if making an offer of compensation is the best approach for your uh, for selling your property um, and only offer compensation or make a payment to a buyer agent if they have your written approval and sign off on the amount. OK, you know. Um, educating sellers on different types of compensation. While NAR has emphasized that commissions have always been negotiable, okay, um, that's news to some consumers, especially young sellers. I don't think it's a bad thing that NAR is, you know, saying this, you know, commissions have always been negotiable, but if they've always been negotiable, right, always, why are we talking about it now? Right. Especially young, especially young sellers. Right. That's news to some consumers, especially young sellers. Right. And and and, and let's talk about negotiate. It brings up a whole different thing around negotiating prices because I can't negotiate a gallon of milk. I can't negotiate a lawyer fee. By the way, the lawyers asked for 33 percent, which equaled two hundred twenty six million dollars um from the settlement so far they put in for that they've requested that 226 million dollars for their 33 percent while the homeowners are actually going to get about five or ten dollars you know was that fee negotiable was the 33 percent that they charged negotiable because it sounds pretty fixed because it seems like other lawyers charge 33 percent they charge 33 it seems like every lawyer charges 33 percent meanwhile agents every commission on just about every deal is different 
So lawyers charge 33% across the board. Agents charge different commissions across the board, but yet we're getting hit with antitrust price fixing lawsuits here. Um, okay. And, and, and our report earlier this year found that nearly a quarter of uh, millennials did not know they could negotiate agent fees. Well, that's because I'll tell you why that's because they don't realize you can negotiate anything. <laughs> they go to the grocery store. You can't negotiate eggs. You go to the gas station. You can't negotiate gas. You go to the, get a law. You can't negotiate law. You go to get homeowners insurance, homeowners insurance. You can't negotiate homeowners insurance, whatever they, the quote is, that's what you're going to pay. None of this stuff is negotiable. So that's why they didn't know the commissions were negotiable, not because some weird thing that agents did and that we should be penalized for. It's because that's the way the world is. Nothing's negotiable. Like it's, it's like everything's negotiable, right? But nothing's negotiable. Okay. Um, that may be due to the fact that historically a vast majority of sellers have paid five to 6% five to six percent right that th that sounds like that sounds like a range not an exact non-negotiable fee right th this is like says it right here sellers have paid five to six percent which means they either paid five five point one five point two five point five five point nine six it sounds like it's been negotiable it's crazy share between the listing and the buyer agent but with the cooperative compensation no longer set in stone, NAR is being more uh, direct when communicating with consumers, reinforcing the idea that commissions are negotiable and sellers can choose to compensate agents in different ways. There are many options available to you as a seller to discuss with your agent. These could include a flat fee paid directly to the buyer agent. Okay, a flat fee paid directly to the buyer agent. That sounds illegal. Because to my understanding, the law is you got to you you can't pay an agent directly. You got to pay their broker, and their broker pays them. Okay, so did they mean buyer's brokerage? Okay, this is a quote from NARS um, consumer statement, which is right here. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, or allowing your agent to share a part of their compensation with the buyer agent. So now, so now the seller can allow. Your, your listing agent to share a part of their compensation with the buyer agent. Is the DOJ okay with that statement being in this document that's on NARS website that, that they're saying that it's okay to allow your listing agent to share part of their commission with the buyer agent. Isn't that why we're here? Because we were, because they said that was wrong, dude. I, it, it they, it, th there's never been complete clarity around what we are doing. Ladies and gentlemen, how sellers can cover costs. NAR clarifies the difference between concessions and compensation. Okay, this is interesting. Between concessions and compensations. Noting that concessions can make homeownership more accessible for buyers by reducing upfront um, expenses. The guideline lists closing costs and property repairs as types of concessions, but do not mention buyer agent fees. Though they do say concessions can cover some transaction costs. And, and I find that very interesting. Right, I'll get to that in a second when I get to the to the uh, actual document here. Communicating concessions has been a tricky issue for some MLSs. Okay, concessions in the spring, the county's two largest MLSs added concession fields that allowed agents to include an amount sellers were willing to offer. So, you, so, so CRMLS and Bright MLS, they both said had a field that you could put how much concessions, right? How much concession percentage wise, dollar amount, right? Um, Bright MLS also gave the agents the um, the option of specifying at closing the type of concessions offered, including the payment of buyer broker fees. But ultimately, both MLSs, um, um, they, they changed the field to say only that sellers were either willing to or not willing to consider concessions. They took out the the field where you could put in an amount. So you can't put in an amount. You can't put in a uh, percentage, right? You can only say they will or won't consider concessions in an offer. Okay. When you go to this, this is a one page deal, right? On NARS website, consumer guide offers a compensation basically about, you know, sellers. And I mean, it's just one page. You know, I read it, you know, it's just, it's kind of vague. Um, you know, it, it is trying to educate sellers, but you can tell they're tiptoeing here, but there's so many contradicting things like the fact that it said, 
um, that you could share uh, your commissions, right? Um, but when it says you mentioned concessions, what does that mean, right? Concessions is different than offer compensation. It does not mention buyers, you know, buyer agent fees. So that brings me to to think, right? Is there is there a possibility that they might say that? there might be a rule or regulation that you can't use seller concessions towards buyer agent commissions. Could that be something that happens in the future? So anyway, I thought this was interesting. Give me what, give me your thoughts on you know, what, what you feel like is going on here, because I feel like it's just a death shirt attempt to satisfy the plaintiffs. They're tiptoeing around about stuff and they're just trying to do what they can to maintain relevance. Because when you think about relevance, um, you think about the clear cooperation policy, um, there's a little, there's a little war going on here, right? Robert Redfin, um, with, um, uh, the, you know, he's the CEO of compass. He says clear cooperation is being actively investigated by the DOJ and will lead to countless lawsuits like this. And he's referring to, um, Mauricio Umansky's, uh, uh, lawsuit against NAR about the pocket listings. Um, NAR is suing the agent, um, uh, NAR is using the agent dues that are paid to NAR to defend these lawsuits. So NAR, he's saying NAR's using agent dues to defend the NAR lawsuits. Uh, it's reckless for NAR to keep clear cooperation. Clear cooperation basically is forcing you to put your listings in MLS, a role that so many argue is collusive and anti-competitive and which takes away homeowners' rights to choose how they market their homes. If you're a real estate agent and you want NAR um, to end clear, clear cooperation and stop using your NAR dues to defend the policy, please write in in the comments. And of course, there was, you know, thousands of comments there. But right here, he says, uh, Redfin says, don't end clear cooperation. We'll check that out uh, in a second. Um, but basically what his stand is, is that he thinks that NAR should do away with the clear cooperation policy. And people argue that the reason being is because he, he wants to keep everything in house. He has a huge in house. Let's just call it in house MLS that, that he would like there to be. And he may argue that that's not what his motives are at all. Right. And that would be interesting. And if you're watching this, Robert would love to have you come on and explain your side of it um, for my audience. Clear cooperation, imperative or, le or legal risk. The future of private listings and MLS integrity is at stake as a key NAR co committee meets this week to hear arguments about keeping or scrapping a policy. So you look at Zillow. Zillow, Zillow wants it, right? I mean, with Zillow, with Zillow, you know, of course, because everything gets syndicated from MLS. So they keep all the listings on Zillow. They keep the eyeballs. They keep the money rolling in. Zillow tells real estate news that the removal of the policy would encourage uh, an uneven playing field, um, which stands to disadvantage buyers, sellers, and agents. EXP Realty CEO Leo Pereira described the MLS as the most liquid, accurate, and complete data set, um, and that disrupting it would be a travesty. Meanwhile, Compass CEO Robert Refkin uh, has taken a public stand against the policy, which could help him bolster his company's exclusive listing strategies, observers point out. So basically, um, and I want to hear your thoughts. Like, what do you think about the clear cooperation policy? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Um, like, I, what, what do I think about it? I've been thinking about it a lot and I, and, and I listen to both sides and I'm like, both sides have valid points, right? Both sides do have valid points taking out any ulterior motives, right? You, you listen to the actual points and it's like, yeah, homeowners should have their choice to, you know, either put on MLS or not. They shouldn't be forced to put on MLS, right? But then, but then making everything go on MLS actually gives you one central location where everything is. If you take that away, then now you're going to have pockets, right? You're going to have this brokerage has these listings. This agent has those listings. Some stuff's not even on the market. Some stuff's on like you need to know like a special Facebook group to see like the listings are going to go somewhere, right? And if I'm a buyer, let's just say I'm a buyer. If I'm a buyer, I'm going to want to see. I want to want to see all the listings available all in one spot. I don't want to have to go over here, go over there. And then knowing that I'm missing the opportunity of things that are for sale. So, you know, having letting homeowners have the right, I think is a good thing, but also having the data all in one place where it's easy to find 
is also a great thing. So when I when I weigh the pros and the cons, I, right now as it stands, I want to lean a little bit towards keeping the clear cooperation policy because everything's right there. Taking all ulterior motives off the table and just thinking about what's best for consumers. When everything's in one place and all the buyers go there, then you've got the best opportunity to get the most for your property because you got the most buyers in one spot. When you start breaking that up, I feel like you're going to dilute the uh, the process. You're going to lose buyers who may have paid, may have wanted your property, didn't know about it, who would have paid a lot more for it. And I just think that um, I'm leaning towards my stance would be to keep it. I'm leaning that direction, but I'm not there yet, but I'm leaning that direction. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments, because, again, I want to hear what you guys think about all this stuff. But uh, but Zillow, um, you know, they say with restrictive visibility, home buyers and their agents cannot consider all available homes for sale. Right. Additionally, outright removal of the clear cooperation policy would encourage an uneven playing field, which stands to disadvantage um, buyer sellers agents outside of exclusive organizations. OK, um, ESP CEO Leo. You know, he says it's the most liquid, accurate, complete data set. OK, removing clear cooperation uh, would negatively impact consumers. Um, who would be forced into a pay to play scenario. Exactly. There are extreme circumstances for the privacy seller, uh, for the privacy of the seller, but there are trade off in privacy for lack of exposure to potential buyers. It's a listing agent's fiduciary duty to get the most interest from a ready, willing, and able buyer uh, to procure an offer. Okay. Compass, the full repeal of re uh, clear cooperation is a national. Um, NAR mandated rule uh, is the simplest way to reduce legal and financial risk to the industry, and it would enable local decision making in each uh, market MLS. Okay, so is he saying that he would? I would love to have you on, Robert. So he was saying, is are you saying, Robert, that it would be okay for a local MLS to have the policy to put all the listings in the local MLS if the local MLS decides that's what it is, and if so, why break it up? Why not keep it on a national level? It seems like we'd be going backwards at that point. I'm not going against you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing. I'm just thinking out loud about all this. Um, um, Robert, who has touted the company's own private listing network as a strategic competitive advantage when talking to investors. Uh, I think it's not, I think it's not clear cooperation. I think it's forced cooperation. Okay. And then you've got this guy, Brian. Uh, the CEO from a, a thousand watt. Um, he said the DOJ is wrong to go after cooperation, but also commented on why major industry players are taking different positions. Brokerages like Compass um, has concentrated market share uh, in several key areas. Keep more private listings will create more in-house deals for them. Other big brokerages, especially those in, in virtual like EXP, have a broad market share. Lots of agents spread relatively thin. In-house networks aren't as powerful for them, and they therefore more likely to support leaving the clear cooperation policy in place. Meanwhile, portals like Zillow, fewer listings in MLS equal fewer dollars, adding that the issue is more straightforward for MLSs who do not want yet another piece pulled from their Jenga <laughs> tower. Um, he argues for more debate on the policy without the BS. He wrote uh, from the invisible hands of those who benefit from the shadowed chaos of the marketplace without a strong MLS coming into play. And if you look at Redfin, don't ear clear, don't end clear cooperation. So their stance, Redfin stance, you know, this is Glenn Kelman, the CEO, the founder of Redfin. His stance is don't end it, right? Buyers want to see all homes for sale. Sellers want their listings to reach most buyers. Studies show that sellers who withhold their listings from the MLS sell their home for less, sometimes losing more than $50,000. OK, pocket listings are part um, of our exclusionary past. Studies also show that the buyers most likely to lose access to pocket listings are buyers of color. No one should have to know the secret Facebook group to see a listing. The MLS now su fully supports private sales and direct sales. Sure, plenty of homeowners would rather not put uh, up pictures of their kitchen on the Internet or invite a whole block to an open house. Many would prefer to pay one agent rather than two for a sale. Um, the MLS now supports all that, but most consumers, consumers don't realize it. Pocket listings benefit the broker, not the consumer. And that's because their brokers would rather promote pocket listings as a way to fully, uh, to justify high fees 
and to build their own businesses. The brokers who oppose clear cooperation still want to post pictures of the listing to the internet, but only on their own websites. This puts the broker first and the customer second. See, I kind of agree with that. Clear cooperation with loopholes is better than no clear cooperation at all. The clear cooperation policy isn't perfect. Um, it still lets the agent with one brokerage share listings with another one while withholding those listings from agents at other brokerages. But clear cooperation uh, with this loophole is better than no clear cooperation at all. And lastly, if NAR encourages pocket listings, Redfin at some point will have to promote them. Redfin has said in the past that we won't uh, promote pocket listings, even if the rule allows it. But if NAR encourages brokers um, to, to take pocket listings that seem likely to sell quickly, we can't continue to make that commitment. Setting aside the rules re requiring us to share um, and share alike will be at the beginning of the end of cooperation. Stand strong behind clear cooperation. <laughs> okay. So anyway, that this was a lot of stuff today, but um, you know, I just wanted to get you totally up to date on everything going on on this side of the business. You need to be concentrating on your side of the business, getting out there and expanding your brand, expanding your influence, meeting people, building your database, finding those active buyers and sellers, following up with them, helping them do exactly what it is that they want to do. The market is in position to take off next year. Uh, most after election years, housing does incredibly well. And I think we're, we're, we're in the position to do even better than incredibly well this time around because of how down the market has been and how much pent up demand we have. And we're at the end of this cycle of interest rates. It's going to be exciting to see what the feds do um, here in about an hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to be watching um, to see exactly what it is that they do so that we can kind of continue moving forward with this. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Let me know if there's anything in the world I can do to help you. And until then, keep selling.